Hello everyone. I really miss seeing you guys on Wednesday nights. Um, because we can't meet as a class right now, I'm going to try to tell our missionary story like this instead. I'm going to be telling the story, Born in the Mud. This story is about a young gypsy boy. Gypsies live in villages outside the cities and towns of India. And that is where our story will begin. The rainy seasons come to India each year. Then, every day, for almost three months, it rains and rains and rains. The village roads and paths become muddy and slippery. Villagers go about in particularly wet clothes, sleep on damp floors at night, and, make, and many become very ill during this time. It was a morning during the rainy season Laxmi's life was always difficult, but today seemed worse than usual. Her husband and children had left early in the morning to go to the village, so Laxmi had to do all the chores alone. The cow had stepped on her foot when she tried to give him his grain. Then the goat had been stubborn about milking and had kicked over the milk jar, spilling most of the milk. To make everything worse, Laxmi was about to give birth to another baby, and it seemed every part of her body was hurting. Suddenly, she realized that the children had gone off without gathering firewood. Now she would have to find some herself. She would need to go at once since it was raining, and the- <laughs> Don't mind my cat, he's meowing at the door. And the wood seemed, and the wood needed time to dry before she could use it. Oh, why hadn't she noticed that the wood was gone before the children left? Well, no use fretting about it now. She would just have to go herself. Firewood is a very precious item in the villages because everyone cooks with wood. And a lot of wood is needed every day. With everyone using wood, there isn't a lot of firewood laying around the village. Sometimes, gypsies have to walk for long distances just to find some dead branches. Thorn bushes burn very well and create a very hot flame, but they are difficult to break and carry because the long thorns often pierce the hands of the one carrying the wood. Sometimes, entire trees would die and be blown over. But today, it seemed that everyone had gotten there before Laxmi, for there was not a single branch or broken bush in sight. On and on she trudged. Everything was wet. The long grass brushed against her skirt, and soon she was as wet as the ground. The rain stopped once or twice, but then suddenly it would come in all its fury, Laxmi tried to take shelter under some palm trees when it was raining hardest, and then set out again as soon as the rain had slowed down. By now, she had gone three kilometers and found nothing worth taking home. She then remembered that she had seen some fallen trees by the river bank, where they had crossed on their way to another village some months ago. But the river was still at least two kilometers away, well, she thought, better to go where I saw some wood than to just spend time searching up here. Soon she found the old cart road the farmers took to the market and began to follow it to the river. It was a rough and muddy and rugged way to go. Many heavy carted wheels had been traveling on the mud, muddy road. Before she could even see the river, she heard its rushing waters and feared that many, that any wood might be gone or carried away by the, by the river. As she got near, her hopes brightened. The heavy current had carried piles of brush and even some large logs with it. And here, right at the bend, it seemed the river had dropped it all off. Laxmi went over to the edge and viewed the tangled mass. Yes, there was 
enough wood, but it would be difficult to untangle enough to get the pieces she wanted. Her body was already aching from the long walk. Finally, she waded into the shallow water along the edge and began to pull and tug at the stubborn wood. Why did everything have to be so difficult today? She pulled out several good-sized branches and then saw just one more piece she really wanted. She tried her best to get it free, but a large log was laying over the end of it, and it refused to come loose. Finally, with one last effort, she pulled with all her might, and it came suddenly. Without warning, Blacksmith fell backwards into the shallow waters. Splash! Thoroughly soaked and hurting, she pulled herself up and dragged the branch to where the other wood was laying. Breaking the wood into pieces about the same length, she tied some long strands of tough field grass around the bundle and lifted it up to her head. Up the muddy cart path she walked, heading for home. Long before she knew, something was wrong. All of the pulling and tugging and falling had taken its toll on her already strained body. Suddenly, a sharp pain stabbed her stomach, a pain which Blacksmith realized all too well. Oh no, she cried, not here, not now. It was too late. The baby had decided to come. The bundle of firewood rolled off of her head and Blacksmith collapsed to the ground. As the pains became closer and closer, feelings of desperation swept over her. Here she lay on a muddy road in the rain, far from the village, and no one to help her. No one to hear her cries, no one to even take her hand. Desperation turned to anger. How could this baby do this to her? Why did he have to come now? Then, one final agony of pain, and she felt she was going to faint. As the terrible wave of pain began to subside, she heard the first cry. There at her feet, laying in the mud, was a baby boy. Wet and muddy, she cries. His cries were very loud now. She reached down and picked him up in her arms. He was a very healthy baby boy. But what could she do? She was nearly five kilometers from the village, and she was too weak to walk. Laxmi simply sat and began to sob. All of the emotions of the day and of her helpless situation seemed to come pouring forth all at once, and nothing could stop it. She cried and cried. Her tears washed the face of her new baby, and she wiped him with her skirt. At least, at last the wave of emotion ceased, and Laxmi began to think of what she must do now. After several hours, she was able to stand and began her slow and painful journey back to the village. It was late afternoon when mother and baby finally arrived. Neighbors and relatives soon saw Laxmi's situation and tried to help. Each of them admired the baby but wondered about him. When they heard where he was born, bad omen, some said. His father had returned and was pleased that the baby had been a boy. Boys are always helpful and can care for the family when the parents are old. His father named him Kishan. Laxmi sent one of the older boys back down the road for the wood. Another neighbor gave them some wood to use for the evening meal. An aunt took the baby and washed it. Another helped with the cooking. Laxmi lay on a mat and tried to recover from her ordeal. At last, everyone was fed. The neighbors had gone home, and his father and the children were asleep. Laxmi sat in the dark hut, watching the shadows cast by the dwindling fire. 
What kind of boy will this child be, she thought. Perhaps he is hated by the gods. After all, he was born in the mud. What good could possibly come from a boy who was born in the mud? And this is where our story is going to end for this week. But next week, Kishan is going to get to go to school and he's going to get a new name. Thanks for listening.